You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, and every here from Drake Wing Gaming, and it's me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you in the Let's Play episode of Dawn Tide Ranzo's Path. So y'all, yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go! What are we at? Sunday... Sunday... Yep, that's it. Okay. Alright. Outside of Baker Favreau's, Ranzo and I stand with a paper bag, piping hot with the smell of savory pastry. Came up the cobbles on the side of the street, a little bird in an oversized sweater catches his breath. Huh! <clears throat> What's on, lads? What's on? Hey, Joe. Any sign of Bailey? Uh, Bailey's 20 miles out of town on his bike. Sal's busy, too. Oh, all right. Before Joe can catch his breath, we're pacing down the main street. Just the three musketeers, I'm afraid. Should have brought the mandolin, Rans. I need to pra I need to practice a bit. Spin him, spin him back at my own place the whole time. Maybe we should have a jam this week at mine. Uh, it could be good. Though, do you have room for a drum set? Nah, I sold it years ago. I've got a sampler I can use, though. You, you fancy that, rye bread? I'll need practice, too, but sure. They're talking of music. You know anything about, you know anything about sea shanties, Ranzo? I'm trying to track down an old one at work, but just got a melody. If it's not Drunken Sailor or Lever Johnny, probably not. It's considered boat nerd stuff on ships. A bit looked down on. You're wearing a blue and white striped shirt. It's not boat. Is that not boat nerdy? I like stripes. <laughs> Ranzo looks around the buildings. And their walls patchy from wind explosion repainting efforts. Right then, what's new? Joe outstretches a hand in a grand arc towards a vape shop, Cloud Nine. Ta-da! Hey, remember what this used to be? Uh, not sure. Wait, wait. His bushy eyebrows pinch together as he mulls it over. Oh uh, yeah, and yeah, I'm running the latest version, so the save went back a little bit, I think. It was a uh, old-timey sweet shop, right, Mr. Simmons? Joe's talents click at his palm. He speaks with the tone of a TV game show host. Correct. Probably still a sweet shop at the end. A sweet shop for you. If no, hate vapes. Why? They don't hit right. Flavors are always shite. And tobacco's nice. So nice. Joe's talent scratches his jeans before flicking up towards a broad building with gray concrete pillars preceding a row of blacked out floor to ceiling windows. What's that one? Renzo doesn't miss a beat. Not the old market. That's the one. That's a sad one. Not really. The place is going under for years. I think they use it as a storage for, fi for fishing stuff now. They should have turned it into a gig venue. Could fit tons of people in. I think someone tried that, actually. Oh? Could get a license sorted. It's all flats above it. Landlords kicked about, kicked off about potential noise complaints. So now the tenants get to live above a room filled with fish. Great. It's prime real estate. It's prime real estate, baby. Caught. Anza whistles through his teeth. Like you know. I used to go there with mom and dad. It was pretty good. Sold everything in there. Not enough, clearly. At this point, we've walked past the last of the great pillars. A thin, steep street leads down to a small storm harbor. There's an entrance to a pub on the corner. It's painted sky blue. All right, last one. Shit, not the king's horns. I know, right? Big shame. Enzo cups his hands around his eyes and presses them to the window. No, they gutted it. Yep, turning it into flats or something. Enzo steps back, shoulders raised and sulking. Had some good gigs there. That sucks. He looks down the thin, steep, steep street towards the spot on the waterfront. Want to park up down there? Sure. Oh, nice. Joe's the first down. He clears some empty silver canisters to the side with his foot. After you. We sit with our legs hanging on the rough stone of the harbor wall. Ranzo puts down his paper bag and pulls out three smaller ones. He passes them around to each of us. Him and Joe's are marked with F. Mine is marked with V. Veg one, Riley. I think I'm having dinner with a friend later. It's mostly pastry anyway. Not much difference. Who's the friend? Uh, just someone stopping through for the week. You don't know him. And Joe bites into his pasty, heat billowing from the top like a chimney in the cold air. He winces as a trickle of hot grease rolls over his fingers. 
Renzo blows at the top of his before taking a bite of the crust. My heel taps out a slow rhythm against the stone. Funny being back in the spot, and funny being back in the spot, isn't it? All the band but Marin. Ranzo swallows, flakes of pastry dotted on his mustache. How is Marin? She's still around. He takes another hefty bite as I start on mine. Yeah, she's up at the church. Gonna be a vicar soon. Ranzo chokes on his mouthful. You're joking. I'm not. She's gone god mode. Royally, yeah, he's having me on, right? I finish my bite. Nope. Robes and all. Wow, she's the last of us I'd expect for that. Who's the first? Sal, I guess. What? <laughs> Has been atheist 1993. Just thought cause her family's all gaudy. But fair point. Still though, Vicar Marin? And Joe's sharp beak nibbles on a hard bit of crust. His voice is flat. She sent everyone a message about it years ago. She should have kept up. Renzo hasn't taken another bite yet, but he stays quiet. I see her pretty often, actually. You should invite her to hang out this week. If she has time, sure. She's pretty busy. Doesn't drink, either. There you go. Water time. Alright, y'all, and we are back. If she has time, sure. She's pretty busy. Doesn't drink, I uh, Not neither. What about the jam session? Oh, yeah. Does she still play guitar? I don't know about that. Oh, come on. It'll be like before. Makes a change from hymns, I guess. This gets a little chuckle out of Ranzo. Let's do it. Joe, finishing the last of his pasty, crumples the paper bag up in his hand. Ugh. Excuse me. <laughs> you can pretend Joe did that. I'll ask her tomorrow. He starts rolling up a cigarette. We sit there on the wall for a while longer. We finish our lunch and sit quietly as the water rocks the boats around. Joe lights his cigarette. Gray clouds chase each other over each other over the town. We stay in this spot, saying nothing. The wind howls as if trying to blow us from our stubborn stoop. Marin's company isn't the only thing missing. So too is the accomplished glow that used to accompany the spot. A half-empty car park. Cigarette smoke. A closed pub. Three silent friends. Right. Ranzo heaves himself up, supporting himself on a railing. She'd probably be getting off to Mons. See a shinbone then. Yup. He seems distracted. I've got to head to the harbor. See you at the bar. I lean in, offering Ranzo a hug. Ranzo brings his arms around me, locking his hands together behind my back. I whisper, stay. <laughs> Let me know how it goes, okay? Ranzo responds with a firm squeeze and pulls back. All right, see you boys later. Ranzo heads back up the slope towards the east side of town. What are you doing, Joe? Probably just going to grab a spot at Shinny's. Get a drink in. On your own? Asal said she wanted to chat beforehand. Ah, should I be should I be worried? Uh, no. Spoken with confidence. I think she just wants to check in. All right. Well, see you later then. Don't let us keep you busy if your date goes well, though. He winks as she, he winks as he turns. It's not a date. The harbor is calm. Gulls perch on white mastheads. They rock back and forth like the feeling in my gut. I nearly thought last night was a dream. I look around for proof it wasn't. Almost immediately, my heart stumbles. Amidst the familiar scene, a pale figure reclines against a railing. His open shirt billows across a yellow tee, be a yellow tee beneath. One foot crosses behind another, laced tight in black shoes. His gaze finds me. Riley! Hey, I hope I didn't keep you waiting. Griff checks his watch. Nope, not at all. Five, exactly. More like ten past. Right. Uh, good. Shall we walk? Sure. Ha, <laughs> cuties. Take it now. Griff runs his finger, runs his fingers on the railing as we walk. Small claws ticking on the salt-lashed iron. I've missed it here. You have. Of course, it's nice being by the sea. You've got plenty of coastline in the Republic, don't you? Yeah, but it's not the same. This place has a different charm to it. Got some good memories here, too. Makes me wonder what I've missed out on over here. I smile and shrug. <laughs> not much. Come on, must be something. If I'd name one thing that's changed, it's places closing down. Griff points back over his shoulder to Mildred's fish and chip shop on the corner. Seems like so have opened, though. It's new, but it's an Emmet business. Emmet business? You must know what an Emmet is. He 
He shakes his head. It's like a tourist. Someone not from Kierneth. Am I an imminent? Am I an imminent then? Well, you lived here, right? So technically not. Technically, hm, you're too kind. I say for that place because the owner barely even comes here. They're a chef from up country. She's not even called Mildred. It's about about three of them sprung up overnight in different towns. So it's not authentic, is that the issue? You're sounding bitter. Uh, to be honest, I just missed the chip shop that used to be there. It was cheaper. Is there anything that hasn't changed that you're glad for? That's a good question. My brain skips over memories of the town, searching for something constant and comforting. But can it play the ultimate song? Boston's more than a feeling. Sal. I reach inside my chest and feel around for a familiar sensation. Something distinctly pork boring. Air. Something nice about the sea air. It can get pretty intense in a good way. It can be unforgiving, but it knocks some life into you. I couldn't imagine living somewhere without it. It feels it'd feel too still. There's a wilderness to it, isn't there? Right. It's good at keeping you going when you're in a low mood. I remember sitting at home at the cliffs and hearing the wind rattle the windows. Whistling through the brackets. Makes you appreciate shelter when you've got it. Well, when you live along the cliffs... I flash a shallow smile. He tries to return one, but there's a tension pulling it down. Ugh. Ooh, excuse me. I know things were difficult last time I saw you. Things have picked up a bit since then, thankfully. Liar! He stops. Turns. His smile comes back. About time we got something, don't you think? Griff nods over to a harborside restaurant. It's quite a fancy one. Floor-to-ceiling windows, contemporary interior. I definitely can't afford it. Sure. Great. Let's see if they have a table. Oh, cute waiter. Waitress. Waiter? Waitress? Can't tell. Would you like to try the wine, sir? Uh, yeah, waitress. A plucky waitress offers a bottle to Griff. Please. Everything's in this place. Everything in this place shines a little brighter. It's like I know. Sunlight sparkles through the, through the wine as it's poured. Griff's eyes shine as well. He sips. Lovely, thank you. The waitress nods, smiling, and steps away with a snap of the heel. Looking down at our salads, I can't help but feel unfilled, or feel unfilled already. I didn't want to look greedy. Griff raises his wine glass to mine. Cheers! I take a drink. The wine is pleasantly... dry? Full bottled with a note of, uh... I don't know what the note is. Taste some wine! As I'm taking my first bite, Griff folds his arms and asks, So, Mr. Coates, where do you see yourself ten years from now? I... Talk with your mouth full. Griff waits patiently. I play into the tone he set. Uh, well, I've spent the last ten developing my niche, my brand. Still working on your art, then? I shake my head. Music? I shake again. What, then? What's the brand? You've certainly got a brand around town. That's not to mention that. I guess I'm still working it out. Free spirit? And not quite that poetic. You must have something. You've said things are moving up. I turn the leaves in my mouth, peppery and slick with olive oil. It buys me time to think of what to say. I wasn't really happy with what I made. Doing it for uni stressed me out. Uh, trying to do it outside of uni stressed me out, too. I wear a smile. It wasn't meant to be. Griff pauses. That doesn't sound like the Riley I know. I hold the smile. It maybe I'm not. He looks me up and down. You sure look different, but that's to be expected. When I saw you yesterday, even with a new look, I knew that was you. Griff twists a fork into the bed of leaves. Alright, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold-tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for submitting to your ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to not safe for work content. It's as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye!